Hello and welcome to another episode of Attacking Third, a CBS Sports Soccer Podcast. I'm Sandra Herrera, lead NWSL writer for CBS Sports. Joined today, as always, by my colleague and co-host Lisa Roman, NWSL analyst and broadcaster. On today's episode, we have a special interview ahead of the NWSL Championship Final. A quick reminder to just subscribe to us on YouTube to never miss out whenever we go live and for our NWSL Championship Preview and Live Recap episodes. Today, we welcome NWSL Championship bound and Iron Woman defender for Portland Thorns, Kelly Hubley. Welcome to Attacking Third. Thank you. Thanks for having me. We're very, very amped to have you on here. Look, I know for me, when we were going to see like who the two teams were in the championship final and then we had to set up our content planning and arrange our interviews. I was like, um, yeah, we got to talk to Kelly Hubley, like <laughs> the most finest, you know, Chicago yeah. to present. I was like, let's get her on the show. And it's also your first time on the show. So we're very, very happy to have you on and you're here joining us ahead of a big, big game. So let's just start with that. How are you feeling? What's the energy around the team right now ahead of the final? Yeah, super excited. The energy around the team's been amazing today. We just had like a light re-entry day and everyone was just buzzing around. So energy's good. Everyone's excited. I think, yeah, it's just a cool opportunity, really special moment for us. Um, the last game was just amazing with all of our fans. So I think we're just excited to get get the final in and show everyone why we belong to be there. The Thorns are headed to another championship final. Um, and usually when we talk with players or, or being parts of teams, when you when you start a year, you set goals for yourself as a team. And a lot of times teams say, hey, we want to make it to the final. We want to win a championship. We want to do all of these great things. But Portland has actually done that, right? Like you've, you've actually made it to the NWSL championship. Um, when you look back at this year and, and now where you are at this point, um, what is kind of like the, the overall like arch of this team this year, the arc of the team and, and how you got to this point this year? Yeah, it was a big thing for us is like, we thought of like a lighthouse in preseason and like whenever like things aren't going our way, just like there's waves in the ocean. We just always come back centered to that lighthouse. And I think just focusing on our process and being process-based, like, okay, if we win, great. If we lose, but are we like working towards like something greater than just the game? So I think this year has been big of like when things were going good for us, amazing. But when things weren't going good for us, like how do we come back to the lighthouse and be doing things that we know we need to be doing and like we want to win the right way we don't want to win a game where we played bad we want to win the play like playing the game we all want to be playing I love that the lighthouse you know I I, I love that you're like sharing a little bit of insight to that because we've seen like little lighthouse logos mm -hmm. like uh, throughout uh, some of the, the regular season and the postseason it's cool to sort of have the the context uh, with that for for you as, as someone who sits lower on the pitch for this team how's how's the team's communication been this this postseason in terms of their goals and their preparation for for these matches between the semifinal and now this big one coming up yeah I mean as a defensive unit we like communicate like so much like starter non-starter we're all super close we're all really good at like giving each other like advice or like not being afraid like oh I made a mistake how do I do better we're all trying to give each other like just positive feedback and like if you make a mistake you aren't like scared that you're in film they're gonna be like oh this is your fault because it could happen to anybody um so for us like our communication is huge with each other we're all very close with each other um and just as a team like sometimes we don't have a ton of communication and so the past couple of weeks we've been really working on okay at practice it's quiet we need to be louder we need to communicate more so just especially when things aren't going our way we tend to get more quiet so making sure that if they score on us, okay, how can we communicate and get back into the game? You know what? It's so wild to sort of hear you talk about that a little bit coming off of the semifinal. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, talk about like showing up for the players, like massive scenes in this semifinal against um, oh my god, I'm already forgetting who you were looking for. San Diego. Game. I'm I'm just stuck on the I'm just stuck on the crowd because there were there were literal moments in this match where like I'm someone who's watching it at home and I'm just like my god it's so loud in there right now yeah. how did it feel sort of stepping onto the pitch and having to go through those 
maybe periods of moments where like you really desperately need to be communicating with your team and there's all this mess of scenes going on around you. Yeah, it's very loud there. Usually you can't really hear a lot of people. So when it's like corner kick or something, that's when the time to like get information out to each other. But it also like brings you so much energy too, because we got scored on obviously like pretty early in the game. And we could have like went into our shells and got really quiet. But instead, like, I think we had a really good response and hearing the fans like backing us up and like just behind us the whole time was like probably what helped us the most. Um, Like they were so loud. Like I haven't heard Providence Park that loud in a while. So it was just pretty special. And yeah, like I think we had a great response to getting scored on and we came and we fought and we were like, no, like we're grabbing this game and we're going to win this game. We have to talk about it because as you mentioned, um, San Diego gets that opening goal. You come back and equalize. And as this game is winding down and there's stoppage time being put onto the clock, uh, who else but Crystal Dunn (laughs) ends up getting this game winning goal. I want to know from your perspective, Kelly, what did you see during that sequence leading up to the goal? Well, I feel like the last 10 minutes, we were just like, go, 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 go. I was like, we've got to score. Like we are in their half, like so much. We were just attacking, attacking, attacking. You could tell, like we put another level into the game and this was like, yeah, stoppage time. And we're like, okay. Like I remember saying to myself before she scored, I'm like, we got to score on this. Like, just try to get your head on this. Like, I think Taylor's out of the game. So I was like, okay, maybe I can win the header this time. So just the ball popped out to crystal and we're like, Oh my gosh. But it was actually insane. Like her face, like her expression, like she like didn't know what to do. We all didn't know what to do. It was just like an unreal goal. And I'm so happy for her because like, she has just been amazing for us. Like coming back, like she was training up until she basically had Marcel, which is insane, but just to see her come back and like how happy she is and how hard she's been trying to get back has been amazing. It was, uh, again, we're talking about scenes in the stadium. I mean, that was, <laughs> it was already, it was already loud. And then just, it just like, you just saw the, yeah. the, 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 the top pop off of, of the stadium and everybody just sort of lose their minds. It was, it was outrageous to, to see and, and to witness. So for you, I, I kind of want to stay with that energy a little bit because you, you picked up Iron Woman for for Portland, one of you know five players to actually achieve playing every minute this season across the back line. So, sitting in a deeper role, you know, on the pitch for your team in that position, what's maybe like one of the biggest things that you learned about your team this year? Um, one of the biggest things I would say just like our determination for each other. Like we all work so hard to the point that sometimes we work too hard, where like everyone works so hard to drop back like when we defend that sometimes like we're all on top of each other instead of like stepping up to higher players so it's like it's never that we're not going to work hard in a game it's like other things that we need to work on so I just know like going into every game like everyone's going to give their all everyone is going to be working their hardest and I think like that's something special and like you can then build off of that in any way you want. So like each game we can change tactics, but we all know like we're gonna all work hard for each other. And it's just like a big thing for us this year has been just like finding joy in playing because like with everything outside of soccer going on, like we just need to find the joy in the game again. And like, that's why we're playing to have fun and to, you know, like we're not dealing with outside stuff every day. Um, So like having joy while playing has been a big thing for us and just like, I think everyone's showing up for each other every single day. This year, Portland uh, welcomed a new coach, Rian Wilkinson, into the the front office um, and and a bunch of new staff coming in. And she has taken you guys to the playoffs. Uh, you got a bye week during the first week and now into the NWSL championship. Uh, when you look at Wilkinson and kind of how this team has developed under her, what do you think has been the the biggest step forward for this group this year? Yeah, I think it's been really cool. Um, She's very different than Mark. So it's been like opposites, but I love it because she brings this like calm energy to her that like, okay, it's halftime. There's no one's going to freak out. We're all going to have a calm energy. Everyone's going to get breaths together. And I think that's been like really important for us because the first thing we want to do when we come in at halftime is like, oh, this and this to each other. And instead she's like, no, everybody sit down, relax, like grab your breath. And it's refreshing. And I think she like just wants us like to do well so much that 
it's like, I don't know, like, I feel like I've never really had a coach believe in me so much and just like always like want what's best for me. And it's just been like, I'm really grateful for it because like other years, like I haven't dressed or I haven't played. So like having just like knowing that she believes in me in the back of my head, it's, it like helps like for me to be like, okay, I can, you know, try to do something new in the game. She's open to, for us to trying new things. Like if we make a mistake, she's not going to be like, oh, well you did this. Like she wants us to make mistakes. And I think just feeling backed up um, through everything has been important. How refreshing to have a coach yeah. come into halftime and just be like, sit down. Yes. That's what I'm saying before. Like, it's just was be crazy. And now she's like, okay, everyone don't speak to each other, like collect yourselves. And then let's all come together and speak together. And it's like really relaxing because at halftime, I'm like, my like adrenaline's rushing and it's just like, everyone's trying to fix everything. And I'm like, we can't all fix it at once. So like everyone just takes a collective breath and it's really nice. Wow. I honestly, I love that so much. Um, so she's brought a sense of calmness and, and deep breaths into the group. She also, <laughs> yeah. as a defender, she also switched up the formation a little bit. Portland has gone um, from a three back to a four back, uh, players rotating in and out all over the pitch. I want to know from your perspective as a defender, um, that adjustment process going from a four back to a three back and now switching again, like kind of describe mm -hmm. that for the listeners. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I like the three back because I'm more like able to do more on the field. <laughs> um, like center back, I'm kind of more stuck. And she makes jokes because it's like if I have any chance I get to get up the field, I will go. And she always makes jokes about it. Like Kelly, like you can't go every time. And I'm like, okay. Um, but yeah, we really like just gave all in like the beginning of the year, we started in the three back and we all just like said, okay, we're going to do this and we're going to do it to the best of our abilities. And then like as season went on, like we had injuries and stuff. So we had to change. So I think just, yeah, like we all are on the same page and I think that helps. And we like trust in her and our coaching staff that they're going to pick what's best for us. And so when we had a bunch of injuries, we're like, we can't, the three back isn't really working. So we went into the four back. So I think, I don't know, like we just trust each other and we watch like a lot of film. We go over a lot of like tactical stuff. And I think that's important. We like go over it on the field. We go over it on the whiteboard. If anyone has questions, we always ask because the last thing you want is to change formation. And then nobody knows when to step because that can get really confusing. So I think there are times when like it didn't work. And there are times when like you could see it clicking and, you know, like I think in our last game, like we kind of changed into like a press more and like you could see it click better. Love listening to you talk about that because I, when we've been covering the Thorns in particular during this postseason, been referring to you guys as like one of the like if not the deepest team in the league right now, and you could sort of see that reflected in how you all have the ability to kind of you know drift in and out of formation depending on what Wilkinson is is presenting to you all. Uh, in terms of this moment, though, uh, you know the last time the Thorns were in the championship final was was back in in 2018. It was same year you signed a full-time contract with the club. So having some time between then and now, I just wanted to ask you, like, maybe what are some of the differences for you in between preparing for the final compared to back then versus now? Yeah, back then I wasn't even dressing. So it is like night and day for me, um, which is really cool because I've seen both sides of it. And so like, I can help teammates who don't dress. I can help teammates who do dress. Like a lot of people come to me when they're like, I don't know how to feel about certain things. And I just like want people to know, like I've been there too. It's okay. It's okay to go through like everything you're feeling. I think it's just crazy because I am like playing in a final. And I honestly like did not ever like see this happening for myself. If you would have asked me back then, but I think we tend to like over psych ourselves. And so we just need to approach this as like, okay, it is any other game. Like we need to play, like we're playing a regular season game. We, cause sometimes we're like overthinking things. We're like, oh, this is the final. Like we're gonna, we gotta do this. We gotta do that. Instead of just like, okay, no, it's a normal game. We just need to approach it as like another day instead of as the final. Cause the moment we see it as the final, we're gonna be like overthinking things. And that's just like, not where we play our best. Kelly, you must be like reading my, my mind because a follow-up <laughs> for you that I was gonna have was that sort of listening to you chat a little bit about the differences in 2018 versus preparing for this one in 2022 is that you've got a little bit of that experience behind you now. And there's 
you know, with sort of talking about this Portland Thorns team as like a team that does have a lot of depth, that means that there's a ton of players who are kind of going through this for the first time. And maybe that's where someone like you can kind of come in and provide uh, that bit of advice or, or experience, whether it's someone to like a Morgan Weaver or like a Sophia Smith, like these are players who are going to be participating in their first NWSL championship final. These are players that you go up against in training. Uh, what What is it that you're maybe sort of, you know, giving advice to them, whether it's, you know, as, as a defender or just as a teammate in preparation for this moment? Yeah, I think just everyone doing like, what they've been doing all season. Like we've been a pretty special team when we are playing the soccer we want to play. And so we should, we like can't stray away from that. We can't be like become individual. We can't do things we haven't been doing because what we've been doing has been working. And I think staying together as a team and like communicating as much as we can to each other and just like being there for each other. Like there are tough times in the game when you're like, Oh my gosh, what's going on. It's a corner. They just had like three corners on us, but like, there's certain people like I know I'll like make eye contact with and just like, no, okay, take a breath. Like we're in this together. And just like, you know, having that mutual feeling of like, we're in this together has like, I think gotten us like pretty far and like, we're pretty open as a team. So if anyone re really is feeling a type of way, like we work through that like together. So it's like pretty, like we have a pretty special team. An incredibly special team. Um, and, and you touched on this a little in that, you have been in those positions where you weren't dressing and you weren't playing. Um, and now that you are that starter and that consistent player and iron woman for this team, there are also still other players that are very new to this. There are a number of rookies on this Portland side um, and players that are, are coming into the NWSL game. I mean, you look at someone like a Sam coffee who has been pushed in and out of different <laughs> positions. Um, when you look at Sam in particular and and her season this year, uh, playing right in behind her, um, how is your relationship with her defensively and like the communication that you two have on the field? Yeah, I love Sam. She cracks me up. Actually, there's one game she was having allergic reaction during the game. And I was like, are you good? Like I had to ask her like 30 times, like in 10 minutes, like, are you okay? Like, please let me know. But Sam's great. Like she really like just took that six role and like did her best. And she's doing amazing. Like for not playing six, like we were like spoiled with Ange last year. Like Ange is just in another world, but Sam has really come in and like, you know, played to the best of her abilities and she's doing really well. And I think it's something that she like should be celebrated. And obviously like she is and like it's deserving. And so Sam is like so great to play with because like she's somebody that you can like have an open conversation with like you be like Sam I need you to here I need you here and she's always going to do it and you know she's always going to work hard for you you know she's always going to put in those tough tackles and so it's like pretty fun to play with her because like when you see her make a big tackle it makes you want to make a big tackle and like she's always trying to find ways how can I help you like on the ball like where do you want me to be and it's so it's always like a conversation with her like hey maybe try this or can you stay away from me but like show for somebody else so she's just always trying to do what she needs to be doing Looking ahead to this championship match, Portland and you know that you're going up against Kansas City Current, um, a side that can be incredibly dangerous and has made it through a quarterfinal, a semifinal, um, and now heading into this championship. Um, for you and maybe as a team, what what's kind of the focus when now that you know you're going up against Kansas City and what they've been able to do this year? Yeah, um, tomorrow will be like our big like, day where we watch a lot of film and go over tactics so I mean we played them recently so it's pretty still fresh in our brains and like they've been doing so well so I think just you know like they have fast forward line they have AD and goal like they're a good team they play a three back so like how does the three back match up against us so I think just you know going over the last game that we played with them because the first time we played them was like the first game of the season so like that was so long ago but we played them recently so just going over that game and like what tactics we think is going to be best for this game I think is going to be really important and you know it's going to be a really good game it's going to be a battle and I think we're like all really excited for it love to hear it um something else you love to hear and see uh, with the, you know, fast approaching conclusion of the 2022 season, 
in NWSL also comes a lot of awards that drop. There's individual awards that get dropped, and there's also uh, best 11s that dropped. And we saw today, as of this recording, we saw that the best 11 and second best 11 had dropped, and we wanted to issue congratulations to you. Thank for making you. Best second <laughs> team. Yes, Kelly Hovland, best uh, 2022 second team, yes. alongside your teammate Becky Sauerbrunn as well. Yes. So very, very exciting times. We just wanted to, uh, you know, congratulate you and ask you, like, what were your reactions when you when you got the news? I honest, I got an email and I was sitting with my boyfriend downstairs and I was going to just go over. I just thought it was like an email for the league. And so I was like, yeah. And then like, I went and checked my email again. And I was like, wait, I was like, I don't think this is right. And I was like shocked because like, I just didn't expect it at all. Like, I feel like I'm one of those people who like never gets awards and I'm just like accepted that. I'm like, oh, okay. And then I saw it and I was like, wait, what the heck? I like was started screaming. I was like, I got this. And like, he was just so happy for me, but I was just like, oh my gosh. Like I was in complete shock. Like I just didn't expect it whatsoever, like at all, but I'm like so grateful and I'm so excited. I love so- I, I am so happy for you on that because like it so well deserved. And as you mentioned, like defenders don't get that many yeah. and that many I'm awards. I've accepted it at this point. I'm like, I'm just one of those people. I don't get awards and I'm like, I'm okay with it. Uh, look, we're going to keep the celebratory vibes going <laughs> here, right? Cause we're nearing the, the end of the interview. We like to have a little bit of fun with our guests before we, we let them go. So since celebrations are in order, you know, even for, for a moment like this, we heard that you are team DJ uh, for performance <laughs> and you typically kind of, you know, get things going. It's a very important role. I don't think people realize. Yes. I would say it's almost as important as playing every single minute at the center back position. I got, yes, I got to bring the vibes every day. You said you like really set the scene, like you set the tempo energy, you bring that energy. If someone is coming in on a day, you have to make sure that they're up for that as well. So we wanted to ask you before we close out here, what is what has been like your go to uh, track to sort of get things started? Um, so weirdly enough, recently, Yin Yang Twins has really been like super popular. I just made for the playoffs. I made like a whole new, I have a game day playlist, but I made a brand new one for playoffs and it had a lot of Yin Yang Twins. Um, Sean Kingston, Take You There has been a big nice. one. Nice. Um, LMFAO has some, like, it's honestly like older songs that gets everybody going, but like Lil John, we love Lil John, and like I made a TikTok of everyone's best like Lil John voice. So uh, it's actually oh, really funny. TikTok. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we've been kind of going back into the Ying Yang Twins, and that's been like what's getting everybody going. So I, I want to know what's what's like the one song when you want to get people dancing. What is the song that you put on? Dance. Um. TT Me Pregunto. Um. By yes. Bad Bunny. <laughs> Yes. Uh, yeah we love that song too that one gets everyone going too I better not sing it because like I don't want to sing I it. literally but I was about to start singing it <laughs> but I like I love that song it's so good yeah that's big awesome. bad love bunny it. fan <laughs> oh yeah and look I, I I don't know if I would I would trust I would trust someone who wasn't um <laughs> all right so we're talking about getting hyped and we're talking about dance best song to to, to get people dancing how about like if you need to like tone it down, what's the the song you're going to if you need to to have people chill tone out? Tone it down. Ooh. Um. Like what are you gonna play if all of a sudden Coach Wilkinson's like, all right, everybody, I need you all to just sit take down, a deep breath. Down. He points to you and says, deep- Kelly, hit it. Take a deep breath. Ooh, that's hard. I I mean, I do have like a Sunday vibes playlist that I put okay. on. Okay. And we've got some like love by um, Kendrick Lamar. That's a good yeah. one. Ocean Eyes is on there. Um, yeah, I think Those are everyone, good. we have a big range of people on the team. So sometimes I'm like, if you don't like this, sorry. But I can't, I can't. Just wait a couple minutes and a new one will come on. Exactly. Like- <laughs> I and I always offer everybody you can give me requests if you'd like so if you don't give me a request then I'm that's your fault look yeah. that's a real teammate right there just letting them know <laughs> opening it up opening it up for the opportunity to participate yes. and give feedback not all DJs do that but DJ Kelly Hubley I will do that for them yes <laughs> love to hear it listen Kelly Hubley, thank you so much for joining us on Attacking Third we always like to show some love to our listeners so thank you everybody for listening and joining along to this interview 
congrats on this fantastic run in the NWSL playoffs, Kelly, and good luck on Saturday. Reminder to everyone, you can catch Kelly Hubley and the Portland Thorns against Kansas City Current in the NWSL Championship on Saturday, October 29th at primetime on CBS. We'll be back with more championship coverage this week. For Sandra Herrera, Lisa Roman, and Kelly Hubley, this was Attacking Third.